Hi, welcome to the signal pad. In the previous episode, I tried to repair this Flux 744 documenting process calibrator and we concluded that the firmware was corrupted. And since then, I spent about 30 minutes fully cleaning it. So it actually became much, much better. Of course, these nicks and marks on it don't go away, but it is, as you can see, quite a bit nicer. And I reached out to the community and asked what they think about the, the firmware issue. And there were a lot of comments and quite a few helpful suggestions and somebody actually pointed to a place where this the firmware of this instrument can be used to upgrade it. And it does put the instrument into a bootloader or if it is in the bootloader you can upgrade it over the serial port. So that got me thinking, can I force this into the bootloader somehow and see if I can upload the firmware? And I'll show you what I did. And here is the comment that I'm referring to from Brainslayer and he or she suggested that I go to this website and grab the latest firmware. If I go to that website, indeed that website exists, here it is. So I did download this and try to play around with it. And it, the instrument wouldn't really work with this initially because it wasn't in a bootloader format or maybe the firmware was, was too corrupted. And I went back to the schematic and I started playing with this uh, reset switch during power on. I held the power switch at the same time as the reset and I brought it up in many different configurations. And eventually the bootloader actually worked and went through the process of downloading the entire firmware back onto the instrument. And the bootloader even said that the instrument had no firmware. So the problem was 100% with the firmware. And that was the reason why it wasn't booting. So he went through it and let me show you the result. And check it out. Look at that, it actually works, it powers on. And it did ask me for the serial number when I initially was downloading the firmware. So I don't even know if it updated the serial number or not, but here we go. You can see it works quite nicely. So now we can go ahead and test it because this thing has both uh, functions of generating a whole bunch of different kinds of signals as well as measuring them. So it's a quite a capable instrument. This is why it's very expensive. Let's hook it up to something and see how well it works. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to measure it against the Keithley DMM7510, which I've also done a full teardown and review. It's definitely one of my favorite meters here in the lab. And it's powered at the top from the same power supply I was using before. And you can see it's drawing about 320 milliamp with the backlight at its highest setting. So this thing can both measure and source, of course. And so let's try sourcing some voltages, currents, and so on into the into the Kitley and see how it, how it performs. So I'm going to change this from measure to source. Right now it's off. I'm going to choose the voltage. I'm asking for what voltage. Let's do one volt and enter. And check it out. I mean, this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, that thing has five zeros. So there is well, essentially almost five zeros here. There's a two over here, so it's not that far off. And this hasn't been calibrated in who knows how long. And this instrument uh, was calibrated when it was first manufactured. That's also a few years ago. Yeah, that's pretty good. We can again compare it with our other instruments, but I think the Kitley is an excellent source uh, here for us to measure against. So that works. Let's go try five volts. There you go, five volts. There you go, 4.999. So it's a little bit further away than it was at one volt. Let's go ahead and measure that 10 volts. Here's 10. Yeah, pretty good. 9.9998. I, I think it does need a little bit of calibration, of course, but I think it's doing fairly well. I think it can go up to 15 volts. And yeah, looks pretty good. I have to say I'm quite happy with that. We can also measure, uh, create AC voltage and measure AC. So let's go back to AC here. There you go. So right now it's not applying anything. So I can change this to VAC. It's asking me what voltage and what type of waveform. I want a sinusoid. And it's asking for the frequency. So let's try 100 hertz, low enough. And there you go, 0.346. That's one volt peak to peak in RMS. I think that's correct. It's very, very close indeed. So that's working fine as well. And we can ma make obviously a lot more measurements, but I think this is good enough to give us an idea. Uh, the neat feature here is the ohm uh, creation of a resistance, equivalent resistance, which I also really like. Go back to the resistance measurement here. And we can go ahead and put this into resistance mode. So it's asking me for what value resistor Okay, let's try 100 ohms. Let's see what it does at 100 ohms. Yeah, not bad, 100.4, it's a little bit off. I definitely need calibration, I think, in the ohm measurement uh, sequence here. Let's try one kilo ohm. Press enter here, what do we get? Yeah, one kilo ohm is, is significantly closer. Nice, I'm gonna kinda go really, really small, like one ohm. What does that give us? Yeah, 1.4, you can see it's off by almost the same uh, percentage-wise it, as it was at 100. Let's try 10 kilo ohm. Press enter. And what do we get here? Yeah, 10 kilo ohm. It's really quite good. I'm really surprised that it's as close as it is given given how much uh, I opened it up and I was rough with it and you know, it got dirty and so on. But yeah, it's really quite good. What else can we measure? We'll measure we can measure current. So I think for current, I'm going to have to switch these terminals. So I think this goes over 
here for current and this goes over here and this has to go down there put that into DC current let me switch that to milliamp source milliamp yep okay it's asking me how much I want how about 1 milliamp yeah look at that that's good 0 0.9997 I think this thing needs to be yeah it is on 5 and PC good yeah look at that that's good let's try uh, 10 milliamp Here's 10 milliamp. I'm not. I'm not sure how high it goes. Can it do 50 milliamp? No, it can't. I think it can probably do 20 milliamp. There you go. 20 milliamp. 19.998. Yeah, I have to say I'm really quite happy about the way this is working. Now this, of course, m you know, catches the source capability of this, but it doesn't really show the measurement capability. And since we know that the source capability works for measurement, we can just put it back onto itself. So let's go back to voltage creation here. You can do one volt. You can disconnect that. That was a short circuit, actually. That wasn't. Oh no, it wasn't. That's fine. I can put that back over here and back over here. Then I can put this over here and feed it back onto itself. So if I sh press this, there you go. Look at that. It's measuring it itself at 0.99963. So it's a little bit different than what it was on the Keithley, obviously because it's not the same calibration, but it looks good. We should be able to. Can I make this? Uh, change this from here now that's a little bit annoying I have to go back over like this to change this I think at least here's 10 volts you can go back to source and measure 9.9958 yeah looks good and we can continue we can go back to let me go to source and put the resistance here let's put the one kilo ohm back and let's see if we can measure one kilo ohm. well it's measuring something else I think I have to change the measurement to this at the same time or maybe it can't source and measure at the same time hmm that's a little bit surprising I guess it can't I thought it well maybe maybe this is this all measurement perhaps I'm doing this the wrong way am I no it doesn't seem to be able to do that I have to figure out if this is actually oh no, no it is there it is one kilo ohm you have to just change the terminals I am just the first time I'm using this instrument one kilo ohm 999.5 I'm really impressed that this thing actually even works after all these years so yeah, it, it's good, and they can put it back in the lab and potentially calibrate it against the 8.5-digit meter or the Kitley 7.5-digit meter. It, you know, it's going to work fine. It's going to be a good addition to the lab. I did find a battery right over here. I bought that separately. So, but of course, I don't have the charger, but it might be worthwhile trying to see if I can put a bit of charge in it and then see if it works with the battery as well. There's no battery cover, of course, that has to be 3D printed, but this is great progress. So the battery pack is toast. Uh, these batteries are already leaking. So yeah, this is a totally dead battery. So we can go ahead and remove these nickel metal hydride batteries and potentially replace them with lithium polymer batteries. And that would make this quite a bit easier to use. And since the unit itself has no battery charging capability, you cannot damage the batteries by switching them from uh, nickel metal hydride to LiPo. So why don't we just try that? I'm going to remove some of this and see what it looks like. And it might make a good future project. And we're looking at this, this is going to be really simple because we only have the positive and the negative of the battery and we have a thermistor here to protect the battery, this is a temperature measurement. And the rest of the terminals are not even uh, really doing anything directly to the battery. So I just have to take this board out and take a look at it and we can easily put something in there. In the meanwhile, why don't we connect these two to a power supply and then that way we can measure the entire battery management system as well and we can see up down to what voltage the, the instrument would work. And here's the instrument connected directly to the cables through the battery. So it's very straightforward. Let's go and turn it on. And yep, it has no issues turning on from this as well. Let me just get it to a point where I can turn the backlight on. So there's a symbol now at the very top. And it looks like that because the voltage doesn't quite line up, you know, I'm, I'm applying seven and a half volts. So it does show that. So we can go ahead and increase the voltage and see at what point that goes away doesn't seem to really show the voltage level which is a little bit odd so where are we at I think when we hit the top of the voltage there you go turns off so turns off that means that the battery is totally full and I can go down and see at what point the instrument actually turns off so here's 7 volts 6.7 6.5 volts still works that's good oh now it's beeping I think that beeping just essentially means that it's running out of battery. 6.3, 6.2. Here's 6 volts. That's pretty good. 
Ah, there it is. At 6 volts, it shuts off. So yeah, so that's not too bad. It means that it's, it's a very easy conversion. We're going to leave that for a different video. But I'm very happy that this was now finally a successful repair. And we can put this back in the lab and hopefully calibrate it at the same time in another episode. Thanks again for all you guys. You're an awesome community. And it's because of you that I'm able to do this. And thanks always to my Patreon supporters. That's where the money goes. I buy this kind of stuff so I can do these kind of videos. I'm very grateful.